In this video, I discuss seven things that can ruin retirement. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt. Retirement is supposed to be the victory period in your life, and you are entitled to this victory period no matter what your individual circumstances. Regret, ego, place in life all have no purpose in retirement. Treat this as your next life, and in your next life, there's a world of possibility, but only if you're smart. Enjoying retirement doesn't mean that you need to have millions of dollars. In fact, many people who do retire with millions of dollars are incredibly unhappy because of something called a scarcity mindset. A scarcity mindset has nothing to do with money and everything to do with your relationship with money. Scarcity mindset means that someone has a tendency to overspend or underspend because they didn't have enough money growing up. Much like someone who didn't have enough food growing up has a tendency to eat more or save more food for a rainy day. So what are the seven things to avoid in retirement? Well, number one is the child that never grows up, that always depends on mom and dad. I call that the Peter Pan syndrome. We all want the best for our kids and parenting comes in so many different forms that it's almost impossible to say what is the right and wrong way to parent. You can have one child who has every advantage financially. They come from a loving home, and yet that child gets in with the wrong crowd, and a lot of bad things can happen, some of which can't be undone. And then you have another child who has every disadvantage financially, comes from a broken home, yet they conquer the world financially and are the model parent to their own kids. There is no judgment for how someone raises their kids. Of course, there are exceptions, but those are pretty obvious and they generally jump out at you. But at some point you've done all that you can do and it's time to help them stand on their own two feet. This is particularly true if by continuing to help them, you're hurting yourself. You've got to hear me here though. I'm not talking about a child that is incapable of standing on their own two feet, but rather one that just finds it more convenient to accept help, generally financially, from mom and dad. If this is you, start to set boundaries, set dates, tell your child that on a certain date, they need to be able to start taking care of themselves and then follow through. If the relationship turns bad and it turns into an abusive one, which happens by the way, more often than we all would like to acknowledge, then instead of talking to friends and family, perhaps it's time to talk to a social worker of some sort. The next thing to avoid is spending money just for appearances. I call this, the downside of significance, the $5,000 credit card. Let me explain. We all want to feel significant. We all want to feel important. I have a good friend who a few years ago spent three months salary on a watch. Why? Because it made him feel important. It made him feel significant. It gave him a feeling that the way he put it was impossible to describe and even more impossible to cheat. In other words, he needed that watch. It was the solution to the problem of significance for him. He wore that watch every day for months. And then one day I noticed he wasn't wearing it. I didn't think much about it, but I noticed a couple of days later, he wasn't wearing the watch again. And after about the third time I asked him, where's your watch? As it turned out, he was the only one that understood his significance. He kept his watch underneath his long sleeve shirt, as you do. And he wanted people to discover the watch. He didn't want to show it to them, which is a very measured way of being and frankly, probably the correct way if you're going to wear a watch that costs three months salary. The entire time he was wearing his watch, no one commented on it. There were a couple of people that looked his way when it popped out, but nothing, as he put it, was materially different than if he didn't have on the watch. But the big reason that he stopped wearing the watch is that his very wealthy uncle, he ran into and his uncle was wearing a Fitbit. His uncle told him that wearing a watch like that went out in the 1990s. And if he needed a watch to prove his wealth, he didn't have the wealth. In essence, he said, the less money you show, the more money people think you have. And I think generally that's probably correct to a point anyway. So if you're spending money on appearance, remember less is more, at least in this day and age. Point number three is something called the law of diminishing marginal utility. Big words for a very simple concept. The law of diminishing marginal utility means the more you spend on something, the less you enjoy per dollar spent the upgrade of that something. You go out to dinner, you order appetizers, you order a steak for meat eaters out there, 
you order two to three sides and you have a really big dessert. Everything tastes great, but the satisfaction level starts to go down as you get closer and closer to the point where you're actually not hungry anymore. That is the law of diminishing marginal utility. Is the American Express Platinum Card at $695 three times as beneficial as the American Express Gold Card at $250? Some people can figure out how to use that card and actually get the most out of it, certainly more than $695, but that individual is a rare individual. They understand how the points work. They understand the timing of those points and when they expire. But for nine out of 10 people, it is unlikely that the platinum card has more utility than the gold card per dollar spent. And is the black card, the Centurion, worth seven times as much as the platinum card? The Centurion is a $5,000 per year fee card, and that ignores the $10,000 initiation fee. We're more down to earth. Is dinner out at a really expensive Michelin rated restaurant worth three to five times as much as a nice dinner at a family owned restaurant that basically served the same food? And only because I do this, is the family owned restaurant better than the local diner on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon when you take your son or daughter out for brunch. I could go on and on, but basically the law of diminishing marginal utility means the more you spend, the less you enjoy each dollar spent beyond a certain point, beyond a certain minimum. So when you're comparing a $10 cheeseburger at the diner to a $35 cheeseburger at Le One, understand what you're comparing is the law of diminishing marginal utility. Then look for the law of diminishing marginal utility in every part of your life, because I can tell you once you look for it, it is absolutely everywhere. Point number four is rigidity. Rigidity can ruin retirement. It's certainly in the top two or three of this list. If it's not number one, it's pretty close to it. Being rigid means that you're unwilling to consider other options for no other reason than you don't want to. And that one statement, I don't want to, has been the death knell of many a retiree. A classic example is refusing to move out of a very large house where you raise your family after your family is gone. You know the one I'm talking about. It has four or five bedrooms. It has really expensive taxes to support the local school system, and it's quite expensive to heat. So when you find yourself saying no, 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 understand that that might be rigidity talking ask yourself why you're saying no. And if you don't have an answer, perhaps consider the option again. Number five is senior scams. You really do have a target on your back when you move from your working years into retirement, particularly the deeper you go into retirement. This is a well-traveled path. I am sure I'm not the first person to talk to you about it, but there are a lot of unscrupulous people out there who want to take advantage of retirees. Whether it's the fake IRS agent, the salesperson, the unscrupulous salesperson who doesn't tell you all of the facts when they're selling you something, maybe they even misrepresent the facts when they're selling you something, or someone else who just sees you as an easy mark. Scams are particularly effective on retirees because their antenna isn't up. When a retiree was in the workforce, they might have day-to-day -day interactions with someone or a group of people that might not have their best interest at heart. Their instincts were sharp, but once they entered retirement, that level of daily interaction subsided. And because of that, as well as age-related issues relating to mental acuity, seniors are a prime target for scammers. Point six is what I call the hedge, avoiding blind spots. Recently, I was on vacation at a reasonably priced nice hotel and the hotel had a hedge on the far right-hand side of the pool deck. One of the days on vacation, I was sitting on a chair on the pool deck reading, and I looked up and I noticed that there were people walking around the hedge from the hotel next door. I was a bit curious, but frankly, not enough to get up and go check it out. I was perfectly content just sitting there reading, but it did stick in the back of my mind. The next day I was out for a run and I decided to see what was on the other side of the hedge. As it turned out, on the other side of the hedge was another hotel with a better pool deck, cabanas, and more staff to help the guests with their orders. It was also a little bit more family-oriented, 
the pool that I was sitting in front of was more adult oriented. What I found out was that both hotels were owned by the same company and they freely allowed people to move from one pool to the other. So why do they even have a hedge if they let guests move from one pool deck to the next? I asked the person at check-in who I got to know pretty well over the course of the week. He noted that the other hotel was a little more exclusive and they wanted to offer both pool decks to the guests of the other hotel as a perk. But because of capacity limits on our pool deck, they had to combine both pools and that allowed them to get around the city ordinance in terms of the number of people that were on the pool deck at any given time. But in order to actually do that, they had to offer both pool decks to all customers. And if you actually walked around to the other side, the other pool deck, you would see big signs that pointed to the pool deck that I was spending most of my time at. You see this happens all of the time. There is often an offer that's better than the one you have. You just need to look around the hedge, metaphorically, of course. In the last point, A number one, I'd say the number one area where a retiree can improve their quality of life is avoiding worry. At this point in your life, you've earned the right to let somebody else worry about the things that don't directly affect you. And if it does affect you directly, understanding the difference between a fixable and a navigable challenge will help keep worry where it belongs. If you like this video, please make sure you hit the like button, click subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get alerted the next time I post a video. I post about two to three times a week. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.